Good afternoon. Well, it's Monday, March 16th, and we're not at school. You're at home. This is day number one of our three week statewide closure of all schools. I wanted to make this video and get it out to you as soon as I can, but I wanted to make it with the most up to date, accurate, accurate information that I had. I met with all of our staff on Friday, and we met again today on Monday. And between both of those days, we've devised and come up with I think what I think is a pretty, pretty solid plan for delivering the best education that we can over the next three weeks. Now, I say three weeks, but if you've been watching the news, if you've been reading the papers, if you've been listening to the governor, he's alluded on a number of occasions, most lately on. CNN, that he would not be surprised if it's longer than three weeks. Now, as many of you know from this past Thursday, our last day of school, I am not a betting man. And when I try to bet, it doesn't end up well. As in some of your classes, I bet you my house that we'd be in school today. So I am not gonna bet on the fact that we'll be in school or out of school more than three weeks. I'm gonna provide this information based on the factual data that we have. And that is for the next three weeks, you'll be at home learning remotely. So first of all, let's talk about the reason that we're going to continue to learn over the next three weeks. There are some schools out there in Ohio who are shutting down for the next couple of weeks, who aren't being as involved for the next couple of three weeks. But here at Buckeye Central, we are. For a couple reasons. Number one, if you read the newspapers, if you watch the media, you'll hear them use some terms. Terms like unprecedented. They'll say that these, that these are unprecedented times, that this is an unprecedented, unprecedented event. And indeed it is. And indeed these are. They are certainly unprecedented. I have been in education for 21 years now. This is the first time I've ever experienced an event like this. But the thing about unprecedented times is that when we respond to them, when we as a school, when we as a community, when we, when we as a state respond to unprecedented times, we begin to develop precedent. We begin to set precedent on how things will be done. And I believe that education is one of the most important things that we can provide our society. So we here at Buckeye Central, myself, the other administration, the staff, and certainly your parents, believe that in this time frame that we need to provide to you the best education that we can. The precedent that we want to set is that we'll do our absolute best. That's the precedent that we want to set. It won't be perfect. We'll make some mistakes here on our end, and you'll make some mistakes probably on your end as well. But we'll work together through those to make sure that when we get through all of this, that we've done the best that we can do. And that if this happens again in the future, the precedent that we're setting is that education is serious, and we care about how we care about, carry out education in these types of times. Another reason why the need to continue education is important, is that as people, as students, it's important for you to be challenged. It's, it, it challenged. it's important for you to get up and have a meaning and a purpose that day. It's important for you to come across some cognitive challenges that make you think critically. Those are just good, healthy things for you. And those are things that we would like to continue to offer you over these next couple of weeks. Now, thinking about this a little bit, there are some expect, you know, a, a few unique issues that we're going to run into. For example, College Credit Plus or CCP students. What happens in your classes is going to be different than what happens in your typical Buckeye Central class. So CCP students, you are probably in school today. You are learning today. You are, you are online learning today. That's a College Credit Plus class, and those college expectations are going to be a little bit different than ours. Our Spanish students, 
are Spanish students in Spanish in Spanish one, two, and three. We have paused the modules for quarter four. We're not going to offer new modules to you right now. But more importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to previous modules, to module one, module two, and three, and so forth, and pull up those essential components that you need going into next year and try to spend some time reviewing some of that material to help you retain some of those important concepts that you may have lost over the last four to five months. So even though we're moving forward with what we're doing, it's gonna be different for all of our classes and for, and for most of our students. So when we talk about having a routine, which we'll discuss that later, and trying to stick to a schedule, and we'll discuss that again later, please understand that, that is those are generalities. And, and there'll be some things that are different from class to class. And there'll be some expectations that are different from class to class. So let's get into the heart of the matter. Let's, let's get into how we're going to deliver education for the next couple of weeks at this point in time with the factual information that we have from our governor. So how we're going to do this, starting next Monday, on April 23rd, I'm sorry, on March 23rd, you'll begin to receive emails, if you haven't already, from your teachers. They're gonna have three main channels of communication with you. It's gonna be email, it's gonna be Schoology, and it's gonna be Google Classroom. All three platforms that you're totally used to, all three platforms that you've used already on a number of occasions, we do not want to you know, pull any different apps or different websites, nothing new. We're gonna use things that you know well and are comfortable with. So starting on Monday, you'll receive from them lessons. Now what we've learned over the last week or so, because that's, that's about all the time we've had uh, to get ready for this, what we've learned is that in times like these, when you move from a total seated situation to a total virtual situation in some cases, or in most cases, that change can be abrupt and it can be hard to handle. So we wanted to make that change as smooth as possible. If you're a student who has seven or eight classes every single day, we didn't want to throw at you seven or eight individual lessons every single day of the week. That would be a lot. That would be a challenge for you to handle. Because while I know you're online a lot, while I know and we know that you're using devices a lot, most of our students use those devices for entertainment purposes for consuming entertainment information and media, not for learning. And learning online is different than consuming entertainment online. So we wanted to take some time and break you into this slowly. So what will happen next week on the 23rd is we'll begin to deliver two separate lessons to you for every single class that shows up on your schedule. Because the research tells us this, the research says, that in times like this, three to four lessons a day is what students in our situation will handle the best. So if you're a student with seven classes and you get two lessons from each of those classes, that's 14 lessons a week. If you have eight classes, that's 16 lessons a week. 14 to 16 lessons a week divided by five days a week gives you about three lessons a day. And that's the number that we're shooting for, about three lessons a day. So you'll receive an email, a Schoology, um, a Schoology connection, uh, a classroom, I mean, I'm sorry, a Google Classroom, a message. You'll receive some sort of communication from one of those three things coming from your teacher, offering two lessons to you each, in each of the classes that you have starting next Monday. Now, our expectations generally here, and this is general, is that those will be due the following week. So if you receive them on Monday, they'll be due the following Monday. Now, that's a general rule. So make sure that you check with your teacher, make sure that you read your assignments closely, because they may have different end times or due dates. But that's a general rule, is about a week. Now, what I'm gonna suggest to you to help yourself out is that you try to keep some sort of online learning routine during all this. If you're given 14 to 16 different lessons a week and you don't do anything on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 
Now you're trying to cram everything into the last couple of days before they're due. That does not make for a good outcome. So if you know you have, on average, 15 lessons a week, then in your mind or on paper, schedule three different lessons a day. That way you don't fall too far behind. And that way you're not, you're not working too far ahead. You're at a consistent pace. Try to schedule a routine for yourself. For example, when you get up in the morning, and try to get up at a decent appropriate time. Don't sleep into noon, but try to get up at a decent appropriate time. And then go down and check your Gmail. Check Schoology. Check Google Classroom. Make sure you're looking for any updates that you have or any announcements that you may have from your teachers or from myself. Then also take a look at any feedback that you might have received from any of your teachers on any assignments you might have done prior. Try to look at any type of feedback to improve what you're doing. And then after that, I suggest starting a lesson. Also to help you during that, one thing that may help you is if you turn off all your notifications on all your devices, try to minimize the disruptions you're going to have. You see, here at school, we can do our best to minimize those for you. But when you're at, your, when you're at home by yourself, that may not happen. So try to minimize those disruptions. So get a schedule, get a routine, try to minimize disruptions to the best of your abilities. Now, one thing that's gonna be really important for us during all of this is communication. Communicating with your teachers throughout all of this is vital. If at any point you're confused, if you don't understand something, contact your teacher. If you're becoming frustrated with the process that's being used, contact your teacher. We are here to do our best for you. But since you're not seated with us every day, we don't necessarily know how you're doing and how you're feeling. So you've gotta be open with us and you've gotta communicate with us. You gotta let us know issues you have, frustrations you have, problems you have, so we can solve those. And we can get over those and you can move on. That's the goal. So make sure that you communicate. Now, as a caveat to that, think about this for a second, too. As most of your teachers, um, a lot of them are married with children, such as myself. And if you're working on an assignment at 9 o'clock and you're frustrated and you're mad and you want to email your teacher or you want to email me, please do. Just don't necessarily expect an immediate response at that time of night. Now, most of our staff have been told, actually all of our staff have been told, that from eight to three, they need to be open and available. They're working on assignments. They're trying to follow up with assignments. They're creating assignments, but they also need to be available too. So communicating with, with your teachers between eight and three, eight and four certainly can be done. And I would also tell you this, that most of your teachers should provide for you the best ways to communicate with them as well. There's always email. They may give you a phone to call. They may also offer options of doing a Zoom video conference, kind of like this. But they'll offer ways for you to communicate with them. But please make sure you communicate. And please understand that you know, sometimes communicating later in the evening or into the night, they may not respond back immediately. So that's going to be important. All right. Also, one thing that's going to be important is that we know that the days of school will be open for you to pick up materials that you may need. So, for those of you who did not take home all your textbooks, for those of you who may not have your Chromebook and your charger, the school will be open this coming Wednesday and Thursday. That'll be March 18th and 19th. It'll be open from 9 to 11 in the morning and from 3 to 5 in the morning for you to come and pick up any materials you need. Those are times that we're open to the public. Um, we also ask that when you do that, try to limit to just one child and one parent. The goal is to not have a whole host of people in here as we're trying to clean the building as well. So one child, one parent, this coming Wednesday, this coming Thursday, nine to 11 in the morning and three to five in the morning will be the times that you will be, the school will be open for you to pick up any materials that you need to get ahead, to get started on our lessons that will start next Monday the 23rd. Um, now those who do not have internet access, we are doing our best to provide an education for them as well too. And all call went out. Uh, to make sure that we know all the people who do not have reliable internet access. We think we have a pretty good idea, 
but I want to make sure we're 100% accurate to the best of our abilities. So an all call went out, um, and we're asking people who do not have reliable internet access uh, to communicate with us, to let us know that. So I'm asking you, since you're watching this on, online, if you know someone who doesn't have reliable internet access doesn't, or doesn't have internet access, please have them contact us, because we're working on ways to deliver them the materials they'll need to be successful as well. Now, last Thursday, before all this went down, your last day of school was also the last day of the third quarter. So since it was the last day of the third quarter, grade cards are being prepared this week, and grade cards will be sent out this Friday the 20th. Now, as you know, February was a crazy month for us. I think we missed six days of school due to, due to weather. Um, March wasn't the best when it came to like illnesses. There was the one week where we had 35 and 37 kids a day absent, um, many due to the influenza B. And also there was many days where your teachers were sick because of the influenza B. Due to that, there's probably a number of days in the third quarter where you didn't have access to a teacher. And because of that, there's some missing assignments. So we'll probably have more incompletes than we have had in the past. I'm asking that you use this time wisely then for those incompletes. If your teacher gave you an incomplete, thank them, I mean, communicate with them, talk to them, find a way to communicate with them and find the lessons that you need to complete so you can raise your grade and get out of that eye. So we can change that incomplete to the appropriate game, to the appropriate grade that you deserve and then the one that you have earned. So use this time for that as well. Use this time to work on the incompletes and use this time to work on those lessons that our teachers will provide to you uh, via internet as well. Um, breakfast and lunch, I'm not gonna go into details about that, uh, but the district is working diligently to provide our students, um, our, most need, our most needy students, with the opportunity to have breakfast and, and lunch. So um, be on the lookout for that. We'll be providing a lot of information regarding that in the upcoming days. So pay attention to One Call Now, Twitter, Facebook, all the usual channels for our communication. Um, and let's talk about athletics a little bit because athletics are important to me and they're very important to a number of our students here. Also in the statewide mandated school closure, they also have banned all athletic practices and games. I shouldn't use the word banned. But there are no practices and all the games have been postponed for now. That also means we're not allowed to open up our facilities uh, for practices as well. You can't come out on your own and just lift weights. So all of our facilities are closed down until the state allows us to open those back up. But that doesn't mean that our athletes or just in our student body in general can't nor shouldn't go outside and exercise because that's healthy for you too. Sitting inside all day, working on online lessons, watching Netflix, playing video games, is not the most healthy way to spend the next three weeks. So I would encourage all of you to spend some time outside. Go outside for a walk, go outside for a run, take a hike, take a walk through the woods, uh, go outside, play basketball, go outside and you know, throw the baseball around with your neighbor. Just do something. Get outside and be physically active because that's also going to be good for you both physically and emotionally as well. So get outside and be involved. So even though athletics are shut down, that doesn't mean as an individual on your own that you, that you stop moving, that you stop going outside, that you stop being active. So please make sure that you take some time over the next three weeks to do that as well. And while we're out for these next couple of weeks, Try to find some time to help out those in need. Try to find some time to help out people who are struggling to get through this. We have a lot of families in our, in our communities that work nine to five jobs, that if they don't work that day, they don't get paid that day. And if they don't get paid that day, they may struggle to make some payments that month. That's a reality of all communities across the state of Ohio. And for most of our working parents, school becomes the place 
where the child goes during the day when they go to work. So if the school is closed down and they can't find reliable babysitters or childcare, then these parents struggle going to work. So make sure we get out and help. Maybe you can find some family that needs you to watch a child. If so, do that. Help the elderly, help the handicapped, help them with something that they can't necessarily do on their own. Some of our elderly people need to go and get medicines or get groceries or get something, and they probably shouldn't do it on their own, so go pick it up for them. Take some time over the next couple of weeks to be a really good person, to be who you are. We are blessed to be made up of the best gosh darn kids in the area. So go out and be the best gosh darn kids in the area. Go out and help the people in the community too. Because this issue isn't just impacting us, it's impacting all of us. So do what you can to help. So that's it in a nutshell. I know it's a lot. It's a video so you can watch it more than once if you'd like. Um, if you have any questions, as always, please call me, send me an email. Unfortunately, you just can't stop in and talk right now. We're not allowed to do that, but I'm open to phone calls. I'm open to emails. I'm open to any form of communication that we can do. If you run into issues when we start learning and start providing the learning, we start learning how we're going to provide the learning and we go through this whole process, communicate with your teachers as well. Make sure you communicate with them. They are the key piece in this whole process. So make sure that you stay in touch with them. Oh, and speaking of staying in touch, I think it's important, actually, I know it's important, that we somehow stay in touch with who we are as a school community as well. Even though we're not in the building right now together, does not mean we're not Buckeye Central. It does not mean that we're not proud of the phrase, we are BC, because we are. So our teachers and myself are developing ways to try to kind of communicate with you every single day in different unique ways that help you stay connected to Buckeye Central. Because I'm, I'm afraid that over the next three weeks or potentially more, that that might be lost. And the best part of teaching, the best part of teaching and learning is the human piece. It's the humanity piece. And when we, when we remove that from the education, it's never as good. So we're working hard to find ways to keep that connection with you, to keep that human piece involved as well. So expect some crazy things to come from some of your teachers. I'm, I've already heard of some of the things that Mr. Wiles is thinking of. So expect some of those, and those are good things. Those are things that we're trying to do on our end to keep you connected to us, to keep you a part of Buckeye Central. So again, good luck with all of this over the next couple of weeks. Please stay in contact. If you have any questions or concerns, shoot me an email or give me a call. Take care.